Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have Doug Brignoli back, and I had a couple of things I wanted to discuss because he might know about this. But back in the days of maybe the 40s and 50s in bodybuilding, they also had strength shows. Oh, and yeah. Strength feats like Chuck Sipes and some of these guys would bend rebar or pipe, and they'd take a spike and Nails, take a, yeah. yeah and railroad drive, spikes. And, yeah. And railroad spikes, mm-hmm. they'd drive a spike through a two by four. Um, Mike Dayton, who was a bodybuilder, he would hang himself. And blow up a hot water bottle. Yeah, and blow up hot water bottles. But you don't see this anymore. I don't know why, because it was all part of the show. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can watch guys pose all day long, and pretty soon it's like, okay, bring out some entertainment. You know, bring out girl dancers or a yeah, rock band right. or something, or rock and bodybuilding or whatever. But these guys would do strength feats, and yeah, they would right. break boards, not like martial arts, but they just brute strength. Right. You know, you take a well, metal spike and you put it through a two by four, and yeah. it's not easy to do. Well, I, I would say we still have that. In fact, I would I would say that's a huge huge part of human nature is to mm-hmm. be exhibitionist, mm-hmm. right? But now we have different kinds of strength training. Now we have the one-arm pull-ups, and now we have, you know, these... Well, the whole American Ninja Warrior mm-hmm. is basically feats of strength. Yeah. Right? But but you're right in the sense that it would be nice if you had one particular signature thing that you did right. that everyone knew was hard to do. Well, there's one guy I know. His name is Mike the Machine. A very nice guy. He, his name is Mike Machine? Mike the Machine. That's his name. Oh, the Machine. Okay. The Machine. And he, he does these kind of things. He'll take a horseshoe and open it up. He sent me one. Yeah. And he did, a, I think, a Skype on my show. But he goes around. He goes around to certain prisons and things and he gives lectures on fitness and has a gym and does these strength feats, which is, I think is really cool. You know, Mike Dayton taught me how to tear a phone book. You had to break the phone book, is what he told me. Well, there's a, there, you still need to be somewhat strong. Right. But what you, if you have a phone book, and the smaller one, the better to, to start with, right? You yeah. take the phone book, right? And what you do is you kind of push it so that right. these front pages are taut and the back pages are slack. Right. Right. And then you tear the first few, and then it, it kind of rolls from there. It rolls from there. You do it, and then you do it quick. And if you do it quick, the whole thing opens up. Yeah. Right, we're talking right, about right. phone books this thick. Yeah, now we did a, he had me do it, but he, the one I tore was yeah. barely, and I, there's a picture of me holding both halves of the phone book. I, I, I started with an 8 by 10 piece of paper, and that wouldn't go. Yeah, he but, was such a nice guy. He is a nice guy. I haven't seen him for a while, but I love Mike Dayton. He's still alive? He is alive. He's alive and well, and his yeah. sister is alive and well. We have to look him up. He's not as public as he used to be. He's He's yeah. gone kind of... Kind of a little quiet, but he's still doing well. Well, there was a guy that was uh, uh, back in the day with Jack LaLanne, Arnold Marshall. Um, I can't think of his name. He was a real odd character. You have a party down in the marina or up in Palos Verdes. Very rich guy. God, I can't think of his name. And Mike Dayton was there, and he hung a noose up, and he hung himself at the party. Yeah. And and uh, it was all people bodybuilding. Now, so how does that end? <laughs> no, he got off of the thing. But, oh, so uh, he, in other words, he just holds his breath mm-hmm. and doesn't let his neck mm-hmm. break, and then they let him down. So it's not like he frees himself with his hands tied. The guy's name was Erwin Paris. He was a really strange dude, multimillionaire. He owned a chain of gyms. He wanted me to design a t-shirt for him. I said, okay. And I am thinking to myself, give me some money up front so at least start, right? Months would go by and he'd call me, how the t-shirts going? I said, okay, oh, real good. I never even did them. And I never got paid either. But he would always wear a robe around the house with nothing yeah. underneath. So he has this party for all the bodybuilders and all of his guys go out there. And I think I was married at the time. I took my wife and he said, better go early because they're having a buffet. Well, I think I must have got there 20 minutes late, and all the meat was gone. Just gone. Oh, right. Well, you know why? Well, the bodybuilders were there. They ate it all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, the bodybuilders were there. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where Mike Dayton hung, hung himself, and that's where they had strength feats. And it was kind of fun to see, but those days are gone. Yeah. And Bill Pearl, of course, you know, he yeah. did all kinds of strength. He yeah. did, too. And he used to sometimes dress up in the, uh, the classic strongman outfit with, with the mustache, mustache and, and the furry, furry shorts. The furry, yeah. yeah. And I see, you're right, that's entertainment. And that's the boots with the shits in them. Yeah. The old time, old time boots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, back in, the, back in those early days, that's all that mattered. In fact, they thought it was vain yeah. to be a bodybuilder. Well, of course. They all and, and so they wanted to you know, hold a, a, a piece of wood, a, a platform with you know, 12 people on well, it. Well, I used to see that quite a bit. Right. You don't see that anymore. Yeah. Paul Anderson did that. Right. Um, one of the strongest men in the world. But when you talk about boots, I have to bring up one more name before we close out. There boots. Boots reminded you of this. <laughs> it certainly did. There was a guy named Gypsy Boots. Yes, yes, I do remember him. He was back in the 50s and 60s. He was a health nut. He was the first hippie. Yeah. He was the first hippie. He was on Johnny Carson. He was on all the talk shows. He wore basically nothing, a pair of shorts and a, t- and a tank top, long hair, real tan, hairy chest, and skinny. Yeah, right. But he was about nutrition and health and fitness. And he looked like he was in a dying I day. remember Gypsy Boots. And, and I mean, walk, I never met him, but I read about him. He would walk around down in Santa Monica. Hi, I'm Gypsy Boots. Have you tried one of my health nut bars? And he'd give you a bar. 
And then he went into Gold's gym, and Joe Gold knew him, of course, and he goes into the sauna, and he's in the sauna for the longest time. Joe Gold walks in there, and he's standing there pissing on the sauna. Joe says, what do you think you're doing? He says, well, I like a natural sauna, you know, with my own urine. He says, get the hell out of here, and don't you ever. He threw him right out, 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 out that back door. You don't come in my gym and piss on my sauna. Do you remember Life Extension? Yes, I do. Dirk Pearson and Sandy Shaw? Yeah, absolutely. That was kind of a little bit more of a modern-day gypsy boots, you know, yeah. where they were... You know, they were sort of hippie-ish, mm -hmm. and they had these really kind of crazy ideas. In fact, one of the things that I always thought was interesting is they would promote the idea of everyone lowering their estrogen. Yeah. Everyone take Novadex. Okay. Right? Because even if you're not a bodybuilder, estrogen is bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as long as you're going that way, because I can bring these things out of my mind. I've been taking these brain pills I was telling Doug. I take yeah. one in the morning, one at night. Everybody says the brain pills make you think clear. I think they do. Really? Yeah, I think they do, but I couldn't find the bottle where I, I forgot where I put it. Yeah, right, right. No, that's so right. What, what, what's in it? Do you know what's in it? I have no idea. And you take it anyway. I'm taking it. <laughs> I have friends calling me up north, and uh, they told me it works. My girlfriend takes it. She says it works. She can really focus on business. And this past two weeks, I've been in. I always try to st try my stand up comedy in elevators to see how funny I am. Yeah. And I've been right on the money. And I bet nobody laughs. They all laugh. I walk yeah. in, and I have the whole place going. And, I, and, and when I leave, they're, they're laughing like they just walked out of a show. And I'm testing myself to see how good I can be, and I've been really good this week. I uh, missed the brain pills. But I was going to say, those shows back in the day, there was a show called Body Buddies. Bernie Ernst. Oh, yeah. Bernie Ernst and Ginny Ernst. Now, I don't know if Bernie's still around. I had a feeling he passed away, but I have his phone number, and I think I said um, that he passed away. I was going to scratch his phone number off because I wasn't getting him on the show. Yeah. Uh -huh. They ran a, a Body Buddies show for years and years and years. Yeah. It was like Jack Lane to work out yeah. on, on camera. Right. He had bleach blonde hair. And he looked like really feminine. Yeah. And his wife, Jeannie, helped him. And Jeannie was a, a, a waitress at Donkin's Inn in the marina where we would all hang out and pick up oh, chicks on the right. weekend. Yeah. So and they'd come down to the beach. And yeah. I just thought about it because those old shows of workouts were so basic. Yeah, right. But they by got, today's standards. By today's yeah, standards. Yeah, but, right. they, but they did get over and people liked them. Well, and Jack LaLanne, same thing. It was very basic. You know, you pick a couple of tomato soup cans. And right. He had his chair and his dogs. He had his but but the suit. fact, there's always been an interest in people to get healthier and stronger and more fit. It's, right. It's, it's been, a, you know, obviously part of our existence since we were... Well, they didn't have internet then, and they had TV, but most of these things were like early morning shows. Yeah. And then if they wanted publicity, even Phyllis Diller was one, and, and people like that who wanted to get known, they would either go on the Gary Moore show, which yeah. was uh, uh, What's My Line, yeah. uh, which was Bruce Randall's, that What's My Line, they try to guess what he did for a living. And then they would have uh, Groucho Marx yeah. say the secret word, and win yourself a thousand dollars, and the yeah. duck would come down and say the secret word, it could be the day or whatever. And those people would come on as contestants so they could be known as bodybuilders or comedians or what actors or whatever they were. Yeah. And a lot of the bodybuilders back on went on there. Yeah. Reg Lewis was on there huh. with his wife uh, uh, Sherry at the time. Right, 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 right. So one, one, of the, one of the chapters in my book talks about sort of the evolution mm -hmm. from, you know, purely strength-minded exercise and performance-minded exercise to what is now bodybuilding. Right. And there's, Kate, I show one picture of a cave drawing of something called bull leaping. So something like literally BC, like before Christ, that far back, they were doing exhibitions of strength, exhibitions of entertainment, right? The things that were daredevilish. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's been part of our nature since you know. Yeah, that's true. If you look back in the old magazines, I have a bunch in my garage from 1941. Um, they had a they had a bodybuilding cartoon character, and he was like the icon of bodybuilding, and his name was Bosco. Do you remember Bosco? He had a head like a. Pyramid? No, I don't remember that. Uh, I thought that was the cutest little cartoon ever, and yeah. I would like to bring him back as a logo for something. I'm not quite oh, sure what. Well, good. But I mean, I think back about how it's evolved from then, and having old muscle and fitness was called yeah. muscle training or, or bodybuilder magazines. That, and the two guys I remember were uh, Yvonne and uh, Pierre Brunet from Canada. Huh. They were twins. Yeah, right. And they looked like today's bodybuilders. They were ripped. Yeah. Right, and I used to say right. to myself, how do these guys get like this? And Joe Weider would write this big article how they trained. They packed on 20 pounds of muscle on their chest. And 20 pounds on their arms, they packed on muscle. And I keep thinking, how do you pack on muscle? How do you pack on muscle? And I thought, yeah, right. I'm going to go down to the market. I'm going to buy 30 pounds of ground beef and just pack it on. And this is what it, it meant to me when he would say it, because it sounded like this is what yeah. you do, right? Like it happens overnight. Yeah, it happens overnight. And he would say, get out of the bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, perform a sneak attack on your muscles, and scare them into growing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> as you can imagine, anything that is... You know, the subject of much imagination for people is going to be commercialized Absolutely. and exaggerated. And, 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 and by the way, you know, I think humans have always liked the idea of superheroes. Of course. So that's one of the things that people like, you know, in modern day bodybuilders are basically living, breathing superheroes. Right. Well, I brought this up for I don't know what reason. 
All I know is that you guys write in, you like to hear my stories. And you're a historian. And I have a lot of stories. Yeah, so, right. So many that I probably could Story in. His story in, that's yeah. right. <laughs> um, I, someone said to me today about being a go-getter, you're really a go-getter, right? I said, right. yeah, I think so. But I'm going to change the name of my dog, Ozzy, to go-getter. Because every time I see a chick, I said, go get her. Yeah, right, exactly. Right? Does he comply? It's, yeah, he usually does. Women like him. He probably, yeah, I was going to say, he's probably more influential than you are. <laughs> yeah, but, but the other thing I want you guys to do, because we all want to train, we all want to get big, we all want to be in good shape, not necessarily big, but ripped and looking really good yeah. and hard and sexy for the rest of your life, is to buy Doug's book. Oh, my gosh. Thank you very much. But, yes, I agree. Um, and, and let me emphasize, though, this book is mainly about mechanics. Right, we do talk a little bit about nutrition. We do talk a little bit about uh, uh, physiology, but it really is mechanics. It's ninety percent mechanics. Right. So, if you want to know which exercise is better than which and why, this is the book to have. Or, and, and, and by the way, there are people out there. I don't want to name any names because I don't want any one to be mad at me or feel embarrassed. But there are people that will say that all exercises are good. And that's simply not true. Not true. Right, because... Well, it's good for one, may not be good for the well, other. Well, it has nothing to do with that. It's loading. It has to do with levers. Yeah. Um, I won't give you the math, but I'll just tell you that if you're a 180-pound guy mm -hmm. and you do parallel bar dips, mm -hmm. you will get 119 pounds of load on each triceps. Mm -hmm. If you, that same guy goes over on that flat bench and does a pair of uh, dumbbell skull crushers mm -hmm. with 20-pound dumbbells, he will get 240 pounds of load on each tricep. His total workload is 40 pounds, two 20-pound dumbbells. Yeah, I see that. The other guy's 180. So there's no comparison. I mean, this is simple physics. Was math your subject in school? No, no, but this is this is basic. This is basic. To me, it's basic. It's because you're smart. Well, I suppose. But, but, the, but the point is, if you're doing dips for yeah. triceps, you're working harder and getting less benefit than the one that would give you more no, benefit no, with less that. work. Well, you talk about body And that's right. absolute. That's not a matter of opinion. Yeah, no, I That's absolutely. You're talking just, about body mechanics. It's really yeah. funny. When I was in college, um, I took weightlifting. And on the, on the schedule of weightlifting, it was called body mechanics. Yeah. Because right. it is mechanics. Right. Right. Don't, exactly. Don't forget that. His yeah. book is on my site right now. Also, it's Christmas. Buy his book for a friend because some people might want to read this and they want to get in good shape. It's a wonderful gift to give because when Christmas comes along or Hanukkah, it doesn't matter which, it's hard to buy for people. It's really hard to buy for guys. I know I'm really hard to buy for. I don't want anything, but someone gave me a book like that. It, you know, it keep them busy and they can learn a lot from this thing, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The other thing I want you to buy, I'm pitching right now, is the Goals Gym logo because I draw each one by hand on eight by ten piece of paper. You can frame and put on your wall or in your gym. I'll sign it. Each I'll one's individually drawn. Individual. I yeah. sit right at this table. And I draw them one by one by one, and I'll put the name to whoever you want to uh, autograph to. And it's a piece of bodybuilding art history. It's just what that by is. By the original artist. By the original artist. This is exactly what it is, and nothing's going to take that away from me. So if you want it, I can sell it. It's on my webpage, rickgrayson.com. Just sign up to order through PayPal. It's an easy thing to do. If you can't order through PayPal, you don't know how, email me, and I'll show you an easy way to do it. Perfect. Sounds okay. great. Thanks for watching Rick's Corner, Thank you. and we'll see you again before the holidays. If not, uh, you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, New Year's. Stay safe, eat healthy, and watch your sugar intake. You don't want to get sick. Exactly. All right. We'll see Happy you next holidays. time. Bye-bye.